Here we go. Have fun, everyone. believe it has been a couple years now since we've done a hanging with Hillary. So uh, I'm Hillary Scarl and my fabulous host, uh, co-host uh, David Maldo with uh, Let's Do Video and our incredible interpreter Heather who's here from Sign Visual Media and uh, Silent Visual Media. Oh my gosh. See, it's been a couple years since I've done the show, David. We it's started this it's been too long. We started this during I the pandemic. You. I missed you too. We are all, the three of us here are in uh, separate states. So I'm in Los Angeles, California. David's sitting next to me, or it looks like he's sitting next to me, but he is actually in Florida. And You're Heather, cheating. Heather, yes, cheating. <laughs> and, and the interpreter is in Pittsburgh. <laughs> but, uh, we decided to, to have a special show tonight because, um, first of all, uh, David, how are you before we, we introduce our guest? I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I just missed you a lot. I miss doing this. This is so much fun. We... <laughs> David is the one doing all of the uh, tricks and the bells and whistles. Uh, he's 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 doing all the green screen and I missed it too. We came up with this during Aww. the pandemic. We did um, like something like 18 shows that are still on YouTube that are just hanging out there. So uh, if you're around, um, drop us a hello in the chat, either on YouTube. We're also streaming on TikTok live. So we're double dipping tonight and as our grand experiment. But um, we're here because actually um, Silent Visual Media was one of the hosts of Not Another Depth Story. And we're going to talk about all of that. But before that, um, we have to introduce Dan Cook. Um, and before we bring him up, um, I just got to let you know who he is because uh, he is an incredible guy. Uh, Dan Cook is a professionally certified by the American language American Sign Language Teachers Association with over 25 years of teaching experience, including at the University of Pittsburgh. He holds a master's degree in deaf education with an emphasis on ASL instruction. And he's produced the traveling game show titled Test Your Knowledge with a sidekick, Jorge Mendez. Dan is the co-founder, executive producer, and host of Signtastic with Silent Visual Media. Please give a warm welcome to Dan Cook. Hello, 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 everyone. How are you all? Are you doing good? Doing so good. I'm so happy to have you. And I forget where you are tonight, Dan. Where are you calling in from? Well, I am here in Tampa, Florida, and I'm super excited to be here. Well, I'm super excited you're here as well. Have you ever done a Zoom 
talk show? You've done tons of Zooms. I know that. But have you done a Zoom interview live stream show before? Actually, I have. I've done many uh, things on Zoom and shows. And this is real fancy, though, David. Wow. Uh, we've just had like normal recorded Zoom meetings, but David really steps it up a notch. This this is fun. And I want to say um, in the chat, Sandra Richley says hello to Dan. Uh, and, and we all say hello back to Sandra Richley. Hey. And Ryan is also in the chat. Good to see you, Ryan. Ryan's, well, Ryan's all with us in many ways, but but it's good to see him in the chat. Ryan has been, yeah, we've got a couple people working behind the scenes here uh, that have been doing a good job uh, setting all this up. So thank you to Ryan and uh, David has been working a ton behind the scenes getting this set up. Um, so I know we've got a lot to cover tonight. So oh. I think first what we're going to do is... Uh, Let's head over to the screening room so we can find out a little bit more about what we're doing. Hey! <laughs> that was a magic switcheroo for sure. Uh, yeah, this is our screening room where we introduce our um, audience to the different projects um, that are going to be happening. So, um, and we're gonna have a chance to talk about Dan's show Scientastic, and then my show, Not Another Duff Story, and the event we're both going to be at next week for the Signlight International Film Festival. So that's all going to be happening in this next hour as we do this live stream show. Uh, but first, before the, um, just so people have a visual reference, we're going to show a clip from Scientastic. But Dan, I'm curious, what is the what are we going to see here? Can you set us up a little bit and tell us a little bit more about what Scientastic is? Well, Scientastic is a game show that teaches the general public sign language, and uh, let me explain how it works. So when we started this. Um, you know, it's a little confusing because we had to pick and screen the hearing people who didn't know sign language. And then they came and before they came to the studio, they had 24 hours to memorize 50 signs. And then they play four games on the set. And the first one is called What's My Sign? And I would give them three words, three signs. And if they got them right, they won money for each time they got a right answer. So I would say this, and the contestant would say, Bible. And then it would be like, bing, and a green light would pop up. Or and I would say this, and the contestant would say, oh, blood. And then a green light would pop up because they got it right. And I would say this, boom. And then they would say, oh, that's a ship. And I would say, okay, well, those three words are related. How? And then they would have to guess. One of the contestants said, is that the Titanic? <laughs> and we were like, no, the Bible and a flood and a boat? That's not the Titanic. <laughs> so then someone said, oh, it's Noah's Ark. And so we were like, okay, that's the correct answer. Uh, so then we go to a commercial break after that. And the second game we play with everyone is signing in. And that is like a trivia game. It is kind of like my uh, test your knowledge road tour that I took on the road. Uh, but we changed some things for Scientastic. We made it a Scientastic trivia game. And the performers will come up and ask a trivia question. And if they answer it correctly, they win money. They have to answer it correctly in English and sign. And then the third game is called um, I, I Saw the Sign. And so they come out and we kind of, me and the performer stand on the stage and we have a conversation and I interview them and ask them a question and then they tell a story. And the contestant has to catch three of the signs that were in there. So they gesture, 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 and then they sign three signs from the contestant's list. And if they get them right, they win money. Plus, they have to interpret the story. It's just for fun. They don't win money for that. We know they're not really interpreters. But some of them are just, they create amazing stories that are way off base. <laughs> but that's the third game. And then the final championship game we have is one contestant wins that game and they come up 
and they have seven signs and the it's kind of like charades where the deaf performer will perform seven signs <laughs> and if they get five out of seven right then they win the five thousand dollars and we created these games because i mean i remember watching shows game shows whenever i was younger like where in the world is carmen san diego and i would watch that and i was like oh i love this show it was awesome but it taught people about geography and I was like, we can do this with ASL, can't we? So that's how we came up with the show idea. I love this so much. And I watched the clips. The clips are amazing. I think it's going to give our audience a little bit better of a visual base. So let's watch the Scientastic clip so people can get an idea of the visuals. Oh, definitely. It looks fantastic. Yeah, and I always, my goal is always to make sure that the game in the audience always has hearing and deaf. So we want to bridge that gap. I want to help educate the public about signing and communication. And that means, you know, Silent Visual Media, my company, really wants to have hearing and deaf people give that, bridge that gap. So that's, it's about time. It's time that we do it. So I agree, I agree fully. Uh, David, let's roll a clip. Welcome to Signtastic the very first game show where questions and answers come in the form of gestures and American Sign Language. Signtastic bridges the gap between the deaf and the hearing communities because every language matters. Every language matters. We gave our contestants 50 signs to learn. The more signs they can recall, the more money they'll make. The drama, we're here for it. <laughs> they'll be put to the test through a series of games like trivia, gestures, and more. And the best part, you can play along at home by visiting our QR code and studying the 50 signs used in each episode. Linguistic fun for the whole family. Play along with our deaf performers as they work together with our hearing contestants for the chance to win a grand prize of $5,000. Yeah, baby. So tune in for a signtastic time. That is Fabulous. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So now I wanted to add to, it was a lot of hard work. And that production, we focused on, like a lot of post-production was focused on the ideas of how to do motion graphics and uh, do the QR code so that the hearing audience could also learn the signs with the game show contestants so they can learn those signs and play along. So we, there's a lot involved in the game and we want everyone to be really excited about it. Well, I have so many questions about that. I want, we're gonna, we're gonna hold that for a second because while we're in the screening room, uh, I wanna take advantage to show both clips and then we can uh, set up and I, I, we're going to go to your set, actually, in a little bit to find out more about Signtastic. We don't have any commercials to take a commercial break because uh, that's an old thing that's happening. That was uh, TikTok <laughs> that I was trying to address. I don't know what's going on over there. Um, because I know some people here are joined because uh, they're part of the Not Another Deaf Story crowd. So uh, I want to show the trailer if you haven't seen it yet. This is two very, very different shows that are being featured um, on this live stream. So um, Not Another Deaf Story is an original theater production that was developed by a cast of deaf actors in American Sign Language that was then translated into English. And the whole thing was filmed with multimedia elements, visual effects, music, sound, uh, of course, open captioned and voiceover to make it a fully accessible integrated experience. So we're gonna show the short trailer of that before, um, before we hop to the next set. So uh, David, let's go ahead and show the short trailer for Not Another Deaf Story. I'm at her cabin in New Hampshire. Yes, now. Is this 258 Silver Road? I'm Chip.
Oh, that makes perfect sense. Sage, come on, what happened to the rational girl I used to know? Gosh, it looks like an antique knife. How would you know that? I'm a park ranger. I work with knives all day long. That's the message. The message isn't from Tamra, it's from a child. Ghost child? I'm out of here. the movie because <laughs> I was watching it and I was catching things and I was like oh man this is fascinating and there's a ghost and I thought maybe it would change the ghost and I was like who is it but it was oh my gosh I'm not going to share it you guys have to watch it yourselves <laughs> it's excellent but the actors involved in that Amber Amber Zion Amber Zion Amber Zion was from Pittsburgh Amber Zion yep and um from pittsburgh pennsylvania but she moved to california but wow she a great actress this is just excellent just it's just excellent and you know that amber and this is her sign name like a yellow uh she um she's actually nominated for best actress for not another death Church. she's nominated she is a phenomenal actor and i love it's this is, i think is our third project working together so I, I absolutely love when an actor really connects with you and you work with them again and again and again. Um, but you know what? I I kind of think that this movie theater is too safe of a place to talk about the show. I think we need to go to a scarier place. So, uh, David, can you put us inside the poster of The Haunted House, please? Okay, so Hillary, I have some questions I want to ask you. All right, I'm here for it. All right. So now with Not Another Death Story, you say that you devised Not Another Death Story. Can you elaborate on that? What does that mean? That means uh, we cast our actors I had an outline that then I fleshed out with my co-director, Momo, uh, which is M on the chin. And she, um, we, we fleshed out the outline in about a week. Then when the deaf actors came, we discussed their characters and they improvised around the scenes. So when they got here, there was no script to hand them. Usually at the beginning of a film or a stage production or a TV show, the first thing that happens is everyone reads a script. There was no script. So it took a, it took a lot of courage on behalf of the actors to have full trust in the process. And I've been doing devised theater for over 20 years. So I love doing it because I feel like that's where authentic dialogue comes from because each actor is creating their dialogue in ASL that mitch matches their character and also the actor themselves that not everybody signs the same everybody's linguistics are different so they got to be able to form that and shape that yeah and you're right there are a lot of variations in signing dialects yeah I'm curious was this story tough to produce or easy? Like how long did it take that process? You said you had to trust the process. How long was the process? This was very fast. I got a grant from Creative Capital in January, 2023. We put out the casting call for actors in April of 2023, got over 200 deaf actors from all over the world who sent in a two minute audition video and the audition had to be, tell me a scary story in sign language. That was the audition, that was it. And so we got all these fantastic stories. So ended up casting eight deaf actors from all over the country. They flew in in July. We had two weeks to devise the show. 
because there was no time for sets or the production values for the theater, we had all virtual projected sets, which you'll see, which actually ended up being a really good device because again, usually construction and set design happens during rehearsals. But because we didn't know what the set was going to be exactly, I kind of knew it was going to be a cabin. I knew I knew that much. So they could start a little bit. But every department had to play catch up during rehearsal. And then we brought once the set once the script was set after two weeks, then we locked in the ASL. Then I got to lock in the English and then bring in the voicing actors who were on the sides of the stage. They were in the dark. So the audience knew they were there, but the focus was only on the deaf actors on stage. Who? And they only had five days to rehearse. I let them keep their scripts to the show because the audience wasn't watching them. So they were very grateful because only three out of the eight knew sign language. <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> that probably was nerve wracking. I mean, I get it. I know that Heather, when we made Scientastic, it was stressful. I mean, there were over a hundred hearing contestants that wanted to pick. We only had, we could pick 33 and we had to find people who had great facial expressions. Like some of them were like, yeah, okay. We want, but we wanted really exciting people, you know? And so I, I understand how you feel about that. Wow. Okay. I have more questions for you. Wait, before, know. before you do that, I want to tag on to your last question because this is good. Were you involved in the casting process for Scientastic? Yes, we were. Um, I think that there were three or four people who were involved on the team who picked everyone. It was kind of like a committee decision and we narrowed it down to 50 and then we narrowed, narrowed it down to 33 and really it was 22 people that ended up getting filmed, but we had backups because back then it was COVID times and there were some contestants who showed up, got tested for COVID and they couldn't, they couldn't play with us. <laughs> so, uh, it was the, that's the scientific game show. That's how we did it. But it was, it was challenging. No. I'm curious though, like, uh, were there disagreements in the casting that there's things that you saw as a deaf person that you're like, I want this person, I like their facial expressions that maybe some of the hearing people missed? I'm curious. Well, yeah, a little bit. I mean, honestly, I think that Heather, we've been great friends uh, for many years and we went back and forth and, you know, when we disagreed, we worked it out. But I think it was, it made the show better because all of the personalities, we put those aside and we just wanted to focus on the show. And it worked out perfectly because all 22 of those contestants, it was, it was beautiful combinations. And some of them would ask me like, how did you know or not know that they knew sign language? And honestly, I mean, we didn't have evidence. Like we weren't like going to their house and watching them, <laughs> but they had to sign a contract to say, no, I really don't know sign language. Maybe I know the alphabet or something like that, but they didn't know sign language before they came on the show. I love that. I love that. It's good. I'm always curious about the casting process, especially uh, when it's a mixture of deaf and hearing people. It's, it's an interesting process. Do we have any questions in the chat? Any questions about the process? No questions yet. We've got observers. Hi, TikTok people, if you're watching. <laughs> I don't know. This is a crazy experiment. Um, uh, real quick, uh, Ryan in chat says it's raining hard where he is, so it's making it extra spooky for him to look at this scene. <laughs> um, yeah. And by the way, if you look at the bottom left, bottom corner of the screen, there's Ryan. Hey, there he is. Yeah, the, the last person who says hi in the YouTube chat, if anyone's watching us in YouTube chat, your profile goes up there, and Ryan just said hi. So, And Ryan's been so helpful. Let's give him a, a quick, yay, Ryan, we love you. <laughs> Ryan, you look like you're 12 in that picture. <laughs> Ryan is behind the scenes right now helping a lot of things. And he's oh, yeah. Been, uh, Ryan... Maybe you could fix my face and maybe look, make me look 25. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that owl you heard there. <laughs> Ryan just said, oh, I'm famous now. <laughs> I like that the owl, um, yeah, Who? up there, that David. <laughs> Who? 
<laughs> David is our owl, our tech genius owl. Um, all right. What else you got? <laughs> other questions? Oh, yes, I have other questions. So I'm wondering, it is successful. The success of not another deaf story. What is your vision for the next steps? What's going to happen next for your story? That's a great question. Uh, I'm hoping that now the filmed version of Not Another Deaf Story, which has been nominated for five awards, which is incredible because we didn't even set out to make a movie. Yay! Thank you. I'm hoping now this film sees... Sounds like a bunch of kids. This is this movie's too scary for kids, David. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, that I, I no, I'm really hoping that the film now gets to tour around the country, to the deaf community, that it goes to um, all cities, large and small. A film is a lot cheaper to tour than it is for a live stage production, but the goal is to build up the audience so we can have a world premiere of the stage production at a bigger theater for a longer run, I'm hoping New York or Los Angeles, and then eventually maybe tour to DC, maybe Pittsburgh and Florida. Yeah. Yeah, count me in, I'll be there. Get on the tour bus. Yeah, we need sponsors and money for that to happen. But the world premiere of the play, I would love it to run long enough that people could come in for it, that uh, I have a lot of ideas how to enhance the multimedia aspects. And that's probably another year or two down the road, but this is a big project that's going through many, many phases of development. And I do want to do, which, you know, I'm grateful for TikTok and YouTube that where people are going to share this journey. So if we become the next Hamilton, you can say like, oh yeah, I remember watching you when two people were watching your live stream and we had no audience to then people discovering the project. And maybe, maybe you're watching this five years in the future when the show has evolved into something else, but you were here first and you can tell people that you found us early. So if you're joining us live now, you're one of the few. Ha ha, funny I found myself here. Ha ha, give me all the props. Uh, so if you don't mind asking me another question. So not another death story. So it's done. But what do you have planned after this? Like, what's your next project? I have a whole slate of projects featuring deaf characters with hearing characters and they're not deaf movies or deaf tv shows they're just characters that happen to be deaf and that's just one aspect of the personality i i collaborate as often as possible and my goal is to really open doors for deaf writers and deaf directors and producers not just the actors which of course is a big passion of mine to be able to pull in that talent, both uh, professional deaf actors who, in my opinion, don't work nearly enough, all the way to new deaf actors who don't even know how to start or how to have a chance for that. So I'm looking for investors and sponsors to come on board to be able to produce more projects. I've got uh, feature films, TV show, um, some cool ideas for this stage production, a music video. So I've got a lot of things in the works and hopefully I'll get to do my next project um, starting this summer. So that's something to keep your eyes peeled about. We're getting close to being able to green light. Uh, oh, what's the name? Can you tell me anything more? I'll keep a secret, I promise. I can't tell the name, but it's gonna be fun. Uh, there's a lot of deaf roles in this. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Fantastic. Season two. <laughs> well, no matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. People say, what are you doing next? They tease about Scientastic because I sign it very slowly and I go, Scientastic. Because there's a UFC fighter, that professional boxer. And they would, it was like the, like, let's get ready to rumble. So I sign <laughs> Scientastic really slowly. And I want people to pay attention. So I always go, 
fantastic! Like the UFC people would do that. <laughs> so that's stuck in my head. And every time I say fantastic, I think of saying it like that. Now I'm curious, did you ever have a chance to work with Bernard Bragg? B-R-A-G-G-B-B. -B. Bragg, B-R-A-G-G. -G. Did you work with him? No, I've never worked with him. But I know that uh, one of my college students at NTID in Rochester, New York, um, he was a guest speaker there. And for me, I was sitting there in the audience watching him and I was fascinated. What a performer. And I mean, what that was, he died a while ago, but that was really awesome. And I just think that he really helped the deaf community. His skills were fantastic and amazing. Well, he was one of the founders of the National Theater of the Deaf, which is how I got my start in deaf theater um, long, many decades ago. And it's interesting because he taught so many deaf actors that I, like his performance style has filtered down and you have some similar qualities, I think, of Bernard, of BB that uh maybe i don't know if anyone's watching who knows um, oh why thank you that's a good compliment i'm, I'm curious like what do you think he would like he would probably he would slow down some of his signs too to more i don't know the english to fascinate people to capture people captivate people that's it <laughs> and i feel like that's something he might have done i don't know why it reminded me Oh, that's excellent. Um, sometimes I will sign it slowly in my classes too, because I've been teaching for 25 years. And whenever I sign slow, it makes people pay attention. The students look up if I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And then I sign something very slowly. They get it. I like that. I like that. Uh, There's a question in the, in the chat for Hillary. Oh, sorry. Oh, what's my question? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's ask that. Let's see that question. What, what? is it? What was the tech side of things like during the stage production of Not Another Deaf Story? Did you make custom projections, videos, other special effects? We did a lot. Uh, there's a lot of individual stories in Not Another Deaf Story. And so I chose a location that would be most fitting of a background for each of the stories. And we had a fantastic projectionist. His name is Nick Santiago, S-A-N-T-I-A-G-O, uh, who has worked with Deaf West Theater here in Los Angeles before. And I loved his work. So he came in and um, Nick, me, and Momo um, all and... Uh, we, we gave him our ideas and we picked out a bunch of things to project and then he amplified it and made things move as in video and our set designer, Mary Lee, painted the whole set to leave enough room on the walls and the sides to be able to have the projection bleed out so it's, it wasn't just on the back wall of the stage, which was the cabin wall, but also kind of wrapped around. But for the world premiere, I wanted to go through the audience on the walls near the audience and do 180 so you're completely visually immersed and maybe even on the ceiling. I don't know. I have some ideas of how it will be. We also had a lighting designer whose name was also Nick, Nick Foran, F-O-R-A-N, who came in and he created a lot of the looks and the feeling and really transformed a lot with light since we knew we wanted it to be a powerful visual story for the deaf audience. Uh, so between their projectionist and the lighting, uh, it really was a lot. Then I had a composer come in who wrote 29 original cues in four days for each of the pieces. And then she came back for the film and scored the whole film. And then we had sound design. So it was a lot. There was a lot that was happening very, very quickly. So thank you for the question. Wow, that is awesome. And that story makes me think that might have been more work than Scientastic. Because <laughs> Scientastic seems simple. We had that set just set up and we just played games on it all day. <laughs> but wow, your your show is very complicated. Um, so uh, the theme 
uh, for the theme song for our game show, Scientastic, Wawa and DJ Nick Carr actually developed that. We They composed that for us. And so it's like, Scientastic, throw your hands up. Scientastic's for everyone. So yeah, we wanted everyone to be involved. It's a great song. And I recognize Wawa's voice immediately. I love Wawa. I wanted him actually to be in Not Another Deaf Story. And he had conflicts, which broke my heart because I want to work with him. He's he's phenomenal. He's really, really talented. Um, all right. You know what? Talking about your set, I want everyone to see your beautiful set. I think it is time to move to the Scientastic set so everyone can see the visuals. Okay. Flip over. Let's flip us over, David. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Play game. I'm ready to win some money. <laughs> oh, sure, no problem. <laughs> so now this is actually a still from your set. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, the background uh, is real. Uh, it was on the TV show. And we actually produced this show at WQED Studios in Mr. Rogers' studio. So I remember whenever I walked in there and I looked at that studio for the first time, I was like, man, this brings me back to being a kid. Mr. Rogers filmed here. It was an awesome experience. Mr. Rogers having that loving, kind energy through your set has got to be really special. I mean, he's such an icon. Did you feel that warmth, Mr. Rogers, on your set? Oh, yes. Oh, we both said the same thing. We were like, this is awesome. I, I have a little bit of his spirit there. And it was cool and beautiful. And it was like, he was in us like that. And I, I like whenever I felt nervous or anything, I would say a little prayer and I just keep going. And I really feel like Mr. Rogers was there watching us. It was just awesome. Now I'm curious, Dan, when did you first come up with this idea for this game show? And how long have you been thinking about producing a game show? Well, I think it was maybe 28 or 29 years ago that I first came up with this. Let me go back. So now when I was growing up, I would watch game shows on TV because whenever I was growing up in the 70s, late 60s, there was no closed captioning and everything would just go right by me. I wasn't able to enjoy television like other children were. So I felt like press your luck and uh, all of these shows that I would watch that were game shows and when people would win, I would see this and I would know, understand what was going on. Like Bob Barker as a host on The Price is Right. He was my favorite. And I just thought when I was little, I could do that. And I mean, it's just amazing that now I'm here. <laughs> and it's just real. It's a real thing now. But when I was growing up, you know, always in the back of my head, I loved that. And maybe in 1995. I was teaching an ASL class at colleges and I was, um, you know, responsible for creating different activities to help them learn as a teacher. And I just always wanted to keep the kids motivated and pay attention to me. And so sometimes they'd be like, we'd pay like telephone and games like that. And, but they were college kids. And I thought maybe if I had flashcards that might help them out. So I bought a stack of flashcards and I made images on them and I would say, okay, look at this image. You already know the word, but now here's take three of them, three of these words, three of these images and make a story out of it. And the students would look at that and say, okay, well, there's milk and this is a car and that's a hurricane. And so they'd have to create a story and it really improved their vocabulary. Um, they would really practice classifiers. Like they would say milk oh, or a store and a hurricane. Okay, so here would be, be like the story. I went to the store and I went in and I was curious to see what was there. And I got some milk. Num, num, num. That was delicious. And then I went outside, but a hurricane came by and the milk <laughs> spilled everywhere. And what am I going to do now? Oh, I guess I'll go home and wash my shirt. So those were these three words that people would take out of that story. 
And it was kind of like the same concept with the game show. So, uh, and that was, it developed from 1995 until today and it's on streaming now. Your students have got to love you. They've got to just pick up ASL so fast because you're creative and you come up with games naturally. Did you know what this game was going to be right away? Or did you have other game ideas that you had to filter through? Oh, I mean, I've had a lot of like with ASLTA workshops, I've always had different activities like the telephone line and uh, kind of all of those, like the elephant game. And my favorite was always Scientastic though. I developed that. And it was just, I feel like the students were really motivated to come to my class. And honestly, anyone can be that a good student if they're passionate and they have a goal to learn. Anyone can be successful in learning sign language. And David, come by in your car and read out Ryan's comment. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, Ryan in chat. Um, I'm running over Ryan this bad. Uh, Ryan says he can confirm he's one of Dan's a ASL students and he's the best. Uh, yeah, Ryan has been signing in some of the Zoom meetings we had to prep for the show. And I can confirm that, yeah, you Ryan's sign language. So I was like, you're a great teacher, Dan. Oh, well, thanks. But honestly, you know, teachers can't do everything. It's all about teamwork. Uh, so when I'm teaching in the class, you know, I love to flip the roles as well. And I want the kids to, and the students to teach each other. So the first five weeks I teach and then the next five weeks I say, okay, you guys teach me. And the students go, are you going to teach you? And I say, yeah, teach me. And they get a little awkward, but then they get confidence when that role shifts and they pick up things so quickly. When you're teaching something, you actually learn. That's such a great, con I've never heard of anyone doing that. That's actually brilliant uh, to have then the students become the teacher. And I need to sit in in one of your classrooms for sure and watch that. That's got to be fun. Uh, I have a question for you. Um, maybe, uh, maybe with, oh, what were you going to say? Maybe with Scientastic, maybe every five years we could have people who are sick of me and then I'll teach again and go back to teaching. We'll see. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be, I think once a teacher, always a teacher. Once a game show host, always a game show host. <laughs> uh, I'm curious, what is the hearing audience reaction been of people who maybe aren't <laughs> <laughs> the, the oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting his oxygen from uh the yeah from the from hosting where you yeah where you finally get that breath of energy. I'm sorry, my took my interpreter hat off. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, was it? Oh, I was gonna ask you what has been the reaction from hearing people who are not sign language students watching the show. What's their experience? Well, we had a blue carpet premiere event last month and there were about 250 people who came and every hearing person that came up to me, they were like crying and they were saying, this has changed my world perspective. I never expected this to happen. I never saw deaf and hearing people making something like this. And, but we want to teach people in a fun way. And so I know it's hard. Some, some people can't sign or they didn't learn it before the show. But we do have that QR code that helps people practice the 50 signs and people in the audience who are hearing who don't know sign language can pick it up there. <laughs> and we also had a great uh, motion graphics and kinetic type that helps the hearing audience understand the show as well. We have a comment from uh, KWII that says, so cool. Tell me more about the blue carpet. <laughs> Oh, hi, David. Sorry, I took your job away. <laughs> you were supposed to do a drive-by with the comments. All right, I'll leave the next one to you. So drop more comments so you can see David in the car. Tell me about the blue carpet. Um, well, for almost two years, we tried to get Scientastic sold for TV networks. And many of the networks contacted us. And we talked with some of them. 
but they were like, oh, you're a deaf host. And they just weren't used to seeing that. And eventually what happened, um, we wanted to get a profit, you know, <laughs> but then there's VSYN plus is a new streaming platform that was created for deaf and hearing people. And it's for signed languages all over the world. And I mean, did you know there's about 400 to 450 million deaf and hard of hearing people around the world? I'm not sure of the exact statistics, but I mean, there's a lot. So VSYM Plus, they call it Vision Plus. And they, it's kind of like a Netflix service where they have movies and they're saying, well, where's this sign language? Where's the sign language in a streaming platform? And VSYM Plus is filling that gap. So a month ago, we set up a blue carpet event for a premiere and people were asking me, well, where is Signtastic? Where's it going to be shown? What channel? And I said, it's going to be on VSYM Plus, on Vision Plus. And so we had that blue carpet event to, to screen two of our episodes. And because we were waiting, we didn't want to wait for a couple years. We want people to get excited. And who knows? I think that Vision Plus will be like a Netflix and as popular as that in 10 and 15 years. It absolutely needs to be. So people can watch Fantastic now on uh, Vision Plus. Yes, that is correct. It's already on there. It's uh, You can sign up at www.vsynplus.com. And you sign up, it's $5.99 a month. You sign up for like six months or 12 months. And right now they're also chatting, chatting with Roku. So it's gonna be on the Roku as well. Um, I think that there is a little more time they're developing. It's on Apple um, phones just fine, but Android is uh, still um, getting perfect and they're perfecting the Android. But yeah, you can see it on there now. Maybe go up and subscribe. TikTok people, you need to subscribe, see, for that. So go ahead and do that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, all right. So, and then um, same question back at you. What's your next goal after, after the Scientastic? Do you have other projects? Oh, my gosh. We would love to continue with Scientastic. We have a road tour. My goal is to have Scientastic Season 2. Uh, plus, we also have my company, Silent Visual Media, is also focusing on different projects and development. And we're pitching things like uh, we have a reality dating show. Uh, we also have a comedy show. We have a, a children's animation show. So we are developing things that involve sign language. So hopefully that is, we will be going to Sign Light Film Festival, the International Film Festival next week. And hopefully we'll be networking and meeting a lot of people. Well, I think we need a little sneak preview because you know what happens at film festivals? David, let's show Dan what he can expect here in Los Angeles. And we're gonna go to our next scene. Ah, oh, bring it on. Right now, I'm practicing, focusing on my two Scientastic game shows. I'm going to actually be performing Scientastic live at the Signlight International Film Festival on Friday and Saturday. I'm a little bit nervous for that big LA audience, but I think it's going to be great. <laughs> you never know. It's I'll get that confidence. It's, it's going to be great. But we're going to go there, and we're going to network and meet all kinds of people. And I'm hoping that you know your story, not another deaf story. I hope you guys win awards and can sell more things and all of these movies that are involved in the festival. It's just great. I'm curious, Hillary, you're going to sign light. What are you gonna do there? Well, I'm lucky that I'm actually, I live in Los Angeles. So I get to go to all the events and I'm one of the few people that I don't have to fly in, but Sign Light International Film Festival. It's the first time this festival is happening in Los Angeles, April 16th through the 20th. So on next 2000, 2024, for in case people are watching this in the future. Uh, so on Tuesday is going to be the filmmakers meet and greet from all over the world who are flying in, which I love meeting international filmmakers, but international deaf filmmakers is really special. Um, 
Yes, that's with- awesome. I love that everyone's coming in internationally. We're actually really okay. it's really oh I'm sorry go ahead Hillary, say it. Uh, well really I'm really excited to watch all of the films and screen all of those because they're international I can't wait to see all of these different signed languages and you know not another deaf story that's a champ story it's great and do you think are you confident that you're gonna win what would you I- think we're up for five awards, Dan. So I'd be happy to go home with one because I want to share the love. I do want to share the love. I feel that uh, that's important to me as well. And I want to see everyone. Everyone deserves to win for sure. So even though, yes, of course, I'm hoping because we had over 52 people involved in Not Another Duff Story for both the stage production and the film production. We had, I think, over 70% of our crew and staff were deaf. Um, 100% of all our actors are deaf. That's awesome. It's something I'm really, really, really proud of. Actually, one of our associate producers who's a deaf actor from India, his name is Vai, V-A-I. He's flying in from India to um to come to sign light and be part of this oh my gosh i met with Vi. what a great guy yes he's a smart guy and he knows everyone for 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 a deaf guy living in india he i think he knows every person involved in film and uh the signing community and the deaf community worldwide i've never known anybody to network <laughs> Like Vi can. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, all my friends all over the country, it is so important to go to Hollywood next Tuesday. Go there, see the stars, watch the movies, get the learning on, you know, everything's awesome. It's a once in a lifetime experience. It really is. It really is. So Wednesday, April 17th, not another deaf story is showing at 7 30 p.m uh we are going to be screening the filmed production of the stage production but it's got some special effects some visual effects um our sound designer carol with a k K k-a-r-o-l urban u-r-b-a-n she was the sound mixer for the tv show echo from Marvel. And so she made sure that our deaf audience could enjoy the sound design. She added a lot of bass and a lot of vibration. So during the scary parts, it's surround sound and we should feel some good vibrations uh, for every human being in the audience that night. So it'll be a full sensorial sensation. So I'm excited about that. So, wow. You're saying that show, what time on Wednesday? You said 730, 7.30. And we immediately afterwards, we'll have a question and answer. So the film is 76 minutes long, so a little over an hour. And then the entire cast and crew will come up on stage for a Q&A. So if you didn't have a chance to ask questions in this chat. Oh, my lives discontinued due to inactivity. All right, that's what happened. So when you try to double screen, <laughs> I'm still figuring all this out. Like that's why we need assistance to help do all this. Um, so we'll do a Q and A afterwards, and people can ask questions. We'll have interpreters there, um, a bunch of of interpreters from lots of different languages. We have British sign language interpreters. Um, I don't even know how many languages are going to be interpreted. So that'll be great. And then we have a cast party afterwards, which um, you have to come to the live um, event for us to tell you where the cast party is going to be afterwards for us all to hang and celebrate. And then we've got the awards. Oh, that's Saturday. exciting. Uh, really exciting. And then we've got the awards ceremony on Saturday night. 
uh, maybe I might miss your party. I don't know if I can go because I'm going to go swimming in the ocean at night. Is that okay with you? I will <laughs> join you after the cast party. We need a midnight dip in the ocean. But Dan, you need to also repeat, when do we get to see Scientastic again? Yeah, live? We'll cool off. We'll cool down after that party. <laughs> uh, I'll join you. I'll join you for sure. I'd I'm going to love watching the Q&A and everything. Can Hillary, you repeat, that again? Yeah. Repeat again when your shows are going to be, because you're live and you're performing twice. So repeat when your shows are and how people can see Scientastic. So that will be on Friday the uh, in the morning at 11. And then Saturday night at 5. Oh my gosh, I'm busy with the schedule. I think it's Friday and Saturday. I might be confusing them. But Fridays at 11, at, no. I think Friday, you're in the afternoon. I think Friday in your afternoon, if I remember it. Ryan, can you pipe in with your dates and Saturday morning at 11? Yeah, I think it's Saturday morning at 11, Friday at night. I, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. I'm involved in Scientastic almost every week and I'm doing shows and I'm on the road. It's, it's tough to catch up sometimes with the team and know what's going on. They've they push me where to go. <laughs> well, that's how but, you know yeah. you're you're a celebrity when you've got your managers and handlers just letting you know and driving you around town to say, okay, we're going here. Most celebrities don't know their own schedules. That's why you have assistants and a team. So uh, I wouldn't, you fit right into Hollywood, Dan. So, oh, well, thank you so much. But every morning I get up and I look at my phone and I'm like, oh, what am I doing today? <laughs> I'm like, that's the plan. That is a good plan. That is a really good plan. All right. Well, let's put those links up just in case you want to see for Not Another Deaf Story and for Silent Visual Media. And uh, so go there for more information about the shows and also for the schedules and more clips and information. Um David and Ryan, are there any more um, things happening or questions or things that I'm leaving out? Um, Silent Visual Media said in the chat that it's Friday and Saturday and, and they'll get the times. Okay, so that's coming up in the chat. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. I think um, we're going to wrap up here with a fantastic show. Dan... Yes, I can't I, wait to see you on oh stage. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but I, I know sign language though, so that wouldn't be fair. We have to give it to the hearing contestants who don't know how to sign, right? No? Am I wrong? Oh, no, 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 no. The So Friday and Saturday are the trivia parts. So you oh. can be deaf or hearing and you can play the game and join us on stage. Deaf or hearing and join Scientastic on oh, stage. That could be embarrassing. I don't know. That, that could be challenging. So, uh... I will watch others play and win that game <laughs> for sure. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's about all the time we have. So I want to, first of all, thank you, Dan, for being here and being a terrific guest that you actually resurrected hanging with oh, Hillary. Thank so you. I appreciate that. And to thank our incredible interpreter, Heather, who did a solid hour. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, and David Maldo of Let's Do Video, who's doing all these neat tips and tricks with the kittens on the car and making our sets, our virtual sets, look absolutely incredible and beautiful. And Ryan behind the scenes from Silent Visual Media, who has been a, the true backbone of this and helping set this all up and making this happen. It takes a village. You may see this on the outside, but you know, there's a lot that happens into making these things possible. So with that, thank you so much. And I think it's almost time to call my dragon. Any last words or signs, Dan, before we sign off? I just hope I see everyone at the Sign Light Film Festival next week and uh, look for us on Vision Plus. We uh, have a fourth episode coming out. It's releasing this week. I love that. So thank you all. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm going to call my dragon now to take me home. <laughs>
Laura Ripplinger just popped up in the chat right right in time to say goodbye to us. Oh, Laura Ripplinger is our um, one of our main interpreters for Not Another oh. Deaf Story. Yes, yeah, our CODA on. interpreter. We love you so much, LB, that she has been our backbone and helping every bit of the way. So we love our interpreters. We love our CODA family. So thank you, LB. Mwah. All right. So with that, I think it's time to call the dragon and I will be out of here. So thank you and good night. Hi, thank you.